as well. Hmm. All right, well, guess what? It looks like our next guest is on the line. And I'm pretty, pretty freaking excited about this. And I know a lot of other people are excited about this. And I hope he's excited about this. Let's welcome the one and only, the man that does not age, and neither does his voice, Mr. Mark Evans of Heaven's Edge. What's going on, Mark? How you doing? Thank you very much for the compliments, but I do age, actually. You should see me in the morning, and you should probably <laughs> see me right now, and I'm limping around my kitchen. I can, well, just, I can I, fake it really good for an hour or so. I, I'm telling you. this is. I mean, I look at you, and I say to myself, I remember, like, going and seeing this guy when I was 16 years old, and I, you're probably, like, five, six years older than me, whatever it is, and thinking to myself, like, you know, he, there he is, the rock god with the long blonde hair. And I look at him now, and he still looks like he did, you know, 30 years ago on the Empire stage. Well, thank you. It's a, a, That's all in the hair. It's, it's an illusion. Because I've got, <laughs> there's, if, if you were to look, if you were to look on Facebook and go back to my first profile picture, which was back in like 2009, my hair is incredibly short. I mean, like incredibly short, like businessman kind of, you know, state trooper short. And, uh, <laughs> but I got lucky with good genes, I guess, you know, and it, it grew back. So it hides a, the fact that it grew back uh, kind of hides a lot. But in, in, the, in the light of day, it's a different thing. Well, you, you lucked out because, uh, like I said, to me, you have an age. No gray hairs or nothing. I look at myself, I'm like, what the frig? I got all the gray hairs. I got this. I got that. <laughs> I must Mark, have been I all the right party, I guess. all going on. Uh, well, either way, I'm having a great freaking time. It's like this, this second chance at uh, second chance at, at youth when it comes to to playing music again and playing with Heaven's Edge again and and uh, and this Saturday night, it's been obviously in in the, the works and and uh, planning for months, but it could not have come together better. I mean, I, I'm absolutely blown away, and so is everybody in all the other bands that this night is sold out just in the midst of all the, you know, all the stuff that you're seeing about all oh, the, the music scenes, this and the music scenes, that. And, and um, we got lucky. We got a great lineup that, you know, has got this kind of a crowd turning out and uh, we're all just stoked. Can't wait for it. I can't believe it's only two days away. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I mean, you guys have been uh, plugging away at this for quite a few months and um, yeah, I, I mean, that's going to be such an incredible feeling that it's sold out. Oh, absolutely. I mean, what the I've said this to people before. When we first came back and started playing, and or first played back in the area again at, at World Cafe, we were actually really, really nervous about that because we hadn't played, you know, here in a long time, and and uh, we were trying to find a place that would hold like maybe 300 people, and right. then the fact that we sold out a place that held 750. We were just floored. I mean, they came up to us before, and they're like, they just shut the doors. They're turning people away. We were like, oh, my God, this is this is crazy. And then this one here, we were like, well, we've get, definitely got to, you know, jump up some. And, and uh, plus, we had an, an inkling about what the, the lineup might turn out to be once we get this going. But this is a place that holds 1,000 people, and if we can, you know, get to that, that would be great. But still nervous about it. And so – and. And then this happens again, and it sells out ahead of time. Again, just blows us away. I mean, we're we were a band that was a, a blip on the radar uh, 25 years ago, and but you know people it, it people remembered, and we're so blessed and so thankful for that, and having so much fun with it. That's why we can't wait till Saturday night to get out there and do it again. You know, and and that's the one. This is where I guess like. The, it really shows um, the loyalty of Philly where um, you see it a lot with the sports teams where it's those winning sports teams that are forever in our hearts and forever like royalty. And the heaven's edge is kind of the same way. Like you were, you know, one of those handful of bands that in the, the mid to late eighties that broke out, you've got that label contract and you guys had made it through to the other side and you're forever in Philly's hearts and Philly will always remember you guys. 
which which is an awesome it's an awesome feeling because pretty much all of us, everybody in in the band, had all in one way or another kind of stepped away. You know, um, everybody you know we're having we're married, we've got kids, we've got jobs, we had to move on and figure out what we wanted to be when we grew up. And now all of our kids are getting older and, and such and and uh, and really and, you know because of Facebook all of a sudden people start contacting you you're going oh people actually remember and it's funny before we had ever even gotten back together again we knew that we were going to get back together again to play in uh, England back in 2013 we had been asked the year before and we had all spoke about it and agreed that we were going to do it and they'd added us to the line at the fire fest. But we really at that point weren't sure what we were going to even do around here. So we're like, well, it's England and who's going to say no to that? It's England. Let's go just once in a lifetime kind of experience. But my wife, Jeannie and I, that uh, in 2013 went to, uh, to the M3 festival for the first time, not to play. We just went down there to hang out. Right. And um, we went down there, and so many people were coming up and just like, oh, you guys should be playing here, you should be this. And there were so many people. I was I was calling Reggie and texting Reggie and uh, texting Dave. Actually, Dave was coming down there to meet us and hang out with us on the second day. And uh, I'm like, you guys aren't going to believe this. The people actually remember who the hell we are. <laughs> and then fortunately, you know, we did the World Cafe show and uh, – I had spoken to the promoter of M3 that while we were down there, and he was just like, I've been trying to get you guys. Now you guys are back together. You have to play here. So we ended up playing there the following year, which was a blast. It was just, it was great. And, um, but the, it was, like I said, it was that, that year, that particular year when Jeannie and I had gone down, and we were just walking around going, wow, just wow. Um, so it's, I've had people tell me that one of the things that they like when they've come out to see us now is it looks like we're having just as much fun as they are. And right. that means the world to me because we truly feel that way. I mean, we are, we're there for the experience the same as everybody else is. And if everybody, everybody can walk away just going, wow, that was just so much fun. That was so cool. And, you know, for a night I felt like I was back at the galaxy or at the empire or at hammer jacks or Bonnie's or, you know, it felt like I was back there for for a few hours. If that can happen, then the whole night's a success. And this this time around, the fact that we've got Brittany playing with us, we've got Cyanide Saints playing with us, and Hammerdown playing with us. You know, we all have known each other for uh, you know for quite a while, and um, especially the guys in, in Brittany and Hammerdown for you know for me, uh, it's it's just awesome that we get to, to share all of this together and share it in our hometown in Philly. And uh, I, it's just, it's an amazing thing. Yeah, you know, I was shocked, like, because you guys just added Brittany to the show, I guess about a month ago. And I was like, oh, snap, now it's Brittany Fox, too. It's like, oh, my God, this is like a total flashback in time. You know, I, I had been talking to, to, uh, to them for a while about it, but their schedule is still kind of up in the air. Uh, with the different uh, things that they're doing. And then when all of that fell into place, I was, I had been holding that spot. I had a few other acts that I was talking to and everything finally came to a head, whatever it was, I guess, you know, maybe it was probably about two months ago. And I was just like, you know, I talked to Johnny. I said, Johnny, I just need, I need to make a move. I've got to, you know, make the announcement. What's going on? Can you do it or can't you? And he's just like, we're in. And I was like, awesome. Let's go for it. Nice. And, and he said, and adding them to the bill, because Brittany, in an, a roundabout way, was kind of instrumental in Heaven's Edge even getting together. Try and make a long story short. My wife, Jeannie, was roommates with uh, Mike Shermick, or Michael, Michael Kelly Smith, mm-hmm. when, right when Brittany was getting together. And because of her being roommates with him, and her ties with with the rest of the band, and then her ties then with the Galaxy, she got to know Reggie, and Reggie ended up approaching her and saying, do you think that your, at that time, boyfriend, Mark, would be interested in maybe writing with me? He was in White Fox at the time. 
And she was like, I don't know, but, you know, you can give him a call. I'll let him know you're calling and, and got Reggie and I together. And all because, you know, she was there with Brittany. And then I'd actually spoken, you know, with uh, Mike and then with Brian, their manager, about how everything was coming together with, with Heaven's Edge when we were first putting everything together. And, uh, you know, so in some ways with without Brittany, Heaven's Edge wouldn't have happened. And the fact wow. that we're all together for this night, it's the second time we'd actually we'd played together back in the day at the truck, I believe it was. Okay. And uh, so this would be the second time that we're actually, you know, uh, playing together. Um, That's awesome. But it's, yeah, you know, but there's a, quite a bit of a relationship there. And actually, and Jeannie had posted the other day, I think, she, because she was very involved in, in the thing with Britney Fox when they got their gold record for the first album. She, they had a gold record made for her and, and labeled for her. Oh, cool. It's actually hanging up in my studio. She just posted it the other day. Just it was her Throwback Thursday thing, I think. Right, right. Uh, and uh, because there is there is quite a tie, so it's it's very cool that we're doing the show together uh, this Saturday night. That's awesome. You know, it's it's. Uh, I re- I remember the first time I saw you guys, and if I'm not mis- I know it was the Empire. If I'm not mistaken, was it opening for White Lion? Maybe. Uh, that's very possible. I think it was opening okay. for White Lion, and I just remember being just blown away and saying to myself, like, they they have it, like that's it, like this these guys got it. There was no doubt about it. Oh, thank we we were. Um, I know when Reggie and I got together, things really really clicked, and then we started auditioning for band members, and things fell the way that they did and we all definitely there was definitely something that we felt when the five of us got together that was just like wow there really is something special here and the thing that was that we're really really fortunate with is all these years later the five of us got together after all that time and to start rehearsing for the show in England back in 2013 and we got together and we were like wow this it's still actually whatever that that energy is whatever that thing that puts stuff together still clicks. Right. You can still feel that. And it's not like the five of us have always been this, this tight group of, we always hang out. We always, this, and always that. But when we get together, the five of us as a band, things click and it just feels right. That's awesome. Now, how, the, the whole London thing, when you guys went and played the, the festival over there, like, that was the first time you guys ever been and played over, or actually probably out of uh, out of the country, correct? Yes. So, I mean, all these years later, you're, you're doing this, and it's like your first show back. What was, like, as you're on stage, and the crowd, because I, I remember watching the, the videos on YouTube, and the reaction you guys had, I, I like, I was blown away. Like, I was like, oh, my God, like... <laughs> London loves them. I'm like, these guys must be so ecstatic. You guys, like, on stage have been staring at each other like, what happened? <laughs> it, I, I, it was, to, to, I mean, to put it into perspective, we had, we had gotten together to do a benefit, I it was four or five months earlier, for our drum tech, Tim O'Connell, who had uh, ended up passing away. Um later that year and um, we got together and played like four or five songs I think it was at the Scottish Rite but we hadn't done a full full out set and full show together in well over 20 years and so our first show back was in England and it's if you've been to um, you know any type of festival like that like an M3 or something and actually, M3 is not even like because M3 is just is two stages, so things kind of rotate. So you actually have a chance to go on stage and kind of check things and do different stuff. At Firefest, there's I think there's probably about three thousand people in this venue, and we had gotten there the day before. We went that night and went in and watched some of the other acts that were playing. I'm like, man, this crowd is just crazy. Like they just they are so into these bands and into this melodic rock thing and the 80s thing. And 
we're kind of like, wow, I hope, you know, hopefully they're into this with us. But when we actually hit the stage, they put like a little curtain up so you can walk out on stage kind of privately. The people up in the balcony could see. But we had no idea what kind of reaction was going to come. And when the the, uh, curtain dropped down, it was actually funny at first to give you the, the weird, like, cold sweat, like, oh, crap, what are we going to do now? We play at the beginning of our set, we play the intro that was the intro on our first record that ends with the big, you got to play dirty, and then the drums boom, kick in. Pop, boom, pop, well, boom, pop. <laughs> the funny thing was is we had said to Reggie, Reg, you got to get make sure you have the intro, and we'll put it, like, on a CD and then on a flash drive for whatever they need so we have it. Well, he took it. There's the reissue that was done of our first record on Rock Candy Records. It was like the 20th anniversary version of it. And whoever edited that edited the You Gotta Play Dirty as the beginning of Play Dirty, not as the end of the intro. So Reggie never checked the intro. So he just dumped it onto a CD, handed them the CD, and we're listening and all that, the sound effects and the background vocals and all the guitar effects are coming in. But the big, you got to play dirty, never happened. So we're all standing up there like, uh, and Dave luckily was just like, I guess I got to start playing now. But the big, you got to play dirty, never happened. So all of us just broke out into this like, oh, crap. But then the crowd was going nuts. And I was literally hyperventilating. <laughs> Dean told me after she was up in the balcony, she's watching a videotape this thing. And she was like going, breathe, breathe, because it was it was so overwhelming. The crowd was just so over the top into it. And then from the time we started playing to maybe like two hours after that was this amazing rush of the crowd being into it. They're singing everything. They're into it. We finished the set. They rushed us off to this meet and greet, and we're meeting people from all over the world that have memorabilia that we've never even seen in our lives going, can you sign this? And you've, you know, and they've got all these stories about us, even though they've never seen us and never met us. That it, And so we were floored. And then after that, I was asked to do a solo performance in Athens, Greece, when they found out that we were going to be in England, a promoter had messaged me on Facebook and said, I see that you're going to be in uh, in England. Is there any way I see on Facebook that you do acoustic performances, that you could do a solo acoustic performance of Heaven's Edge material in Athens, Greece? What would that take? I'm like, uh, just ask me. Get me and my <laughs> wife down there to Athens and, uh, you know, put us up and, and we're there. And so we followed that up by going to Greece, and I played an hour and a half of Heaven's Edge stuff acoustic to the most passionate Greek fans I that was it was another holy crap moment these people they sang everything I'm, I was scared to death I'm going, I'm going to Greece literally the, the saying of like uh, it's all Greek to me like these people speak <laughs> Greek what are they going to know about us and they sang everything the first song that I played they were stomping their feet so hard that they knocked all the drinks that I had on a little a table next to me next to the stool they knocked everything off. It just literally rocked the place. And I was just playing acoustic. I can't imagine what these people are like when the whole band's playing there. Wow. And, uh, yeah, so our heads are are still spinning. The fact that we're playing this Saturday at the TLA and that it's sold out and that people are that into it, we're so thankful and feel so blessed and want to do absolutely everything we can to make sure that Saturday night is worth everything that everybody's been looking forward to and every dollar they spent and every minute they spend trying to find parking in South Philly, or, you know, <laughs> on South street, all of that stuff for that night that they can look back and go, that was, you know, that was awesome. And I think with the lineup we have with Brittany and Sinai Saints and Hammerdown, we've got great production. The people that are working with us, the people on our crew, Everybody has just been been great and just geared up to make sure that Saturday night is absolutely everything for everybody that's coming out and everything for us so that we just make a great memory for ourselves because we just live for this. It's it's like a drug. But, you know, you know and, and people uh, that are going, because the show is sold out, so if you don't have tickets, uh, 
you're screwed. But it, it's like the <laughs> perfect night because you can go to South Street, you can go to Fat Tuesdays, get a couple cocktails, and then you can go see a killer show with four incredible bands. And then you can go, when you're done, get a slice of pizza from Lorenzo's to top off the night. I mean, what better a day is that? Oh, yeah. And, and on top of that, um, the they're, because unfortunately, and I feel bad for, for Dom's that they closed down because it would have been a hell of a great place for an after party. Yeah. And it would have been great to hang out there with Nina and Pat and everybody. Um, but at the Woolly Mammoth, just up the street from the TLA, Damian Monte Carlo from Mach 22 is going to be DJing at the, the after party at the Woolly Mammoth. So nice. if everything goes as planned, we're going to go up there and hang out and uh, have some fun, and he's going to be playing everything 80s that you'd want to hear. Awesome. Very, and then very just cool. to be wise, the wife and I got a hotel in Philly, so we don't have to worry about driving home. It's a taxi ride because I expect it to be a little over the top on Saturday night. <laughs> and I have a lot of unwinding to do. Well, here's a question. You had mentioned this earlier. Like, now that you guys are all older, with the kids and all, yes, the kids are getting older, but what do the, the, the children of the guys in Heaven's Edge, what do they think about or think now, like, when they see their fathers on stage doing this? They're actually um, really, really psyched about it. Um, the All of the kids in the, you know, all of the, the children of everybody in the band, I believe, are going to be there. Our three kids are going to be there. Actually, our oldest son is going to be driving up to Montclair. Our youngest son, Dylan, is a freshman at Montclair, and he was very fortunate enough to get the lead, and he's gone up there for musical theater. He got the lead in uh, one of the musicals that they're doing this winter, and he has rehearsal on Saturday afternoon until 4 o'clock. So Justin had volunteered to drive up there, pick him up from Montclair, and then drive the two hours back to Philly to be down in time to watch the show. And then we'll obviously drive him back up on Sunday after the show. But they had come to the World Cafe show and absolutely loved it because it's something that you can't describe. You can describe sure. it, but if you're not there, you can't. And when you're trying to explain, like, oh, well, back in the day, or back in the day, well, we're lucky enough that we get to every once in a while step back, you know, or, you know, step to the other side and go, well, we're back in the day. Just for these next few hours, we're back in the day and having that great time again. And to have your kids to look out and see your kids out there watching you is, is an amazing thing. And actually in England, when, when we played in England, uh, our children did not go, but Reggie's kids, all three of his kids came, they came, kind of made a uh, vacation out of it. Oh, and, cool. uh, yeah, so even in England, he had, uh, you know, all three of his kids there. Wow. Yeah, that's got to be uh, such an incredible feeling. It absolutely is. Now, I'm looking you, forward to share I, I, with them and to make it to make it multi-generational. My almost 80-year-old mother is going to be there Saturday night. Oh, really? That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> He's like, if you can find me somewhere where I don't have to stand... I would not miss this for the world. She's, she's actually coming out with one of her one of her girlfriends that she works with. She's like, you have to come out and see this. And so she's actually at, at she'll be 80 in April. Wow. And, uh, you know, she's coming out. She's like, I wouldn't miss this. Oh, that's great. That is great. Now, do you see, like, um, fans, too, like, bringing their kids as well? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I, absolutely. We see a lot of that. And um, and the fact that they're that they're into it and enjoying it just makes it uh, that much sweeter. Or or they will awesome. just go, oh, I finally got to see you guys. Your parent, you know, my parents have been playing you guys and and Brittany and these other bands and trying to get us to you know like this. And now we get it. Even when we were on the cruise, there were people that, that surprisingly had their kids on the cruise this past year, the Monsters of Rock cruise. They would have you know their kids with them. That's awesome. The thing that sucks, though, I'm not going to be there. <laughs> I, I saw I saw something about that, and that does suck. Yeah. Oh, I'm so freaking bummed out. I'm so bummed out by it. Wow. Well, fortunately people, now... A thousand oh, people be, will get to enjoy it for me. Sure. 
Absolutely. Yes, there'll be yeah, plenty I'll, of video. I'll... Oh, boy. Now, is this going to be like, which I'm hoping, fingers crossed, you think this could, will be like a yearly, almost like reunion of not just Heaven's Edge, but, I mean, it's a reunion of the Philly, uh, you know, Galaxy, Empire, Bonnie's Rocks days? Um, I don't know. Actually, the, the general manager of the TLA had said to me, when, when because the, the last few days before we sold out, it was funny. It was almost like a game show because I'd get emails. There's, you know, uh, it had gone from, it was like maybe a two-week process. of There's 200 tickets left. Now there's 90 tickets left. Now there's 80. Now there's 50. And then the night that it, that it sold out, I got a, te- a message from her. She goes, there's one ticket left. And I actually <laughs> said to her, I'm like, crap. I said, if there's one ticket, I said, I'll buy it just so we can call this thing. Because one of the things I didn't want to happen is, for it to be sold out and to have a ton of people showing up at the door that didn't realize that it was sold out. Or to have there be 50 tickets left and a whole bunch of people show up and a whole bunch of people get turned away. Right. I don't want people to, to be in that position. So we tried to... Um, but she said, she said, this is, you know, the sales have been great and everything. We really should try and make this an annual thing because she was actually the general manager at the World Cafe when we did it two years ago. Okay. And I said, oh, I said, you know, I was like, ha ha, yeah, yeah, we'll have to see. So it, that's a possibility. It'd be great if we could really make it like a big galaxy thing and get like, you know, Cinderella, us, and Brittany, you know, maybe Tangier together and just make it a whole, here's the thing, but that'd probably be a pipe dream. But the fact <laughs> that we get to do it now and then we'll see where it goes from here, um, you know, we're just happy to still be able to do it still be able to enjoy it and that everybody else seems to be enjoying it and um, getting to do what we do. I mean, I've got uh, my next couple of weeks are awesome. I've got that uh, Saturday night at the TLA. I've got next Saturday, um, Jeannie, twice a year we do a thing called Rock for Food. Uh, It's a benefit that takes care of gathering food for the Food Bank of South Jersey. And we have done this, as I believe, our seventh one, and each time we try and raise over a 1,000 pounds of food. And next Saturday, the following Saturday, it's going to be at the Flying W in Medford. We've got uh, Big Bang playing. We've got the band that I play bass in, the Heart Tribute Band, Kick It Out. We have Whiskey Grin playing. We have uh, a new band called Who's Next, which has got basically just like the who's who of awesome musicians from the area playing in it, doing the entire Who's Next record. Oh, cool. And then we have Van Halen Nation playing, so it's a great night of music for a great cause. People bring food out. Flying W in Medford. Starts at 7 o'clock next Saturday on the 21st. And so we've done seven of them, and each one is magical. It's just this positive energy, this great experience and everybody just seems to feed off of the positive energy. And it's another thing that just creates another great memory to go, wow, I was there, I had this awesome time, and everybody seemed to have a good time. So we're just trying to enjoy the ride while we can. Absolutely. Now, how about, too, any possibility of new music from Heaven's Edge? Absolutely. Reggie and I are working very diligently on writing new material. We actually will be doing some new stuff this Saturday. Um, And we've got a whole lot of other new stuff that we're working on, but just with getting the band together to put together the show, we're doing a few songs we also haven't done in a while. And our schedules being what they are, it's not like it was back in the day where we rehearsed every single week. Right. So learning new stuff, plus we're older, the memories aren't as good. So learning new (laughs) stuff takes a little bit. (laughs) Um, But we do have uh, at least one new song that's going to be in the the set this Saturday. But if everything goes well, hopefully sometime in 2016 there will be something, a new CD or download or whatever the technology is at that point from Heaven's Edge. Awesome. Very, very exciting. Cool. Well, Mark, this has been awesome. I'm bummed I'm going to miss it, but I'm also very excited for you guys and the thousand people who will get to see it. Because it's going to be a great night. I, I can't wait. Sorry you can't be there, but I appreciate you having me on tonight. 
And uh, absolutely. Hopefully at, the, uh, hopefully at the next event. Yes, that's right. I have to tell the family, like, no parties, no nothing. We announced this well edge. in advance. You know what? I know. And I kept – here. Like, here is the – I opened the show telling the story about being the ultimate pro- procrastinator, and this was it again where I was procrastinating and saying, all right, well, like, yeah, you know, I got six months. I don't have to get a ticket yet. I can wait. I could wait. And then, like, three months ago, I got an invite for a 16th birthday party for a cousin. I was like, son of a bitch. I'm like, Ugh, I'm screwed, I'm screwed, I'm screwed. And then on top of it now – because there's also that afternoon, Mike Orlando from Adrenaline Mob is doing a guitar clinic at the All Things That Rock School in Delaware County. Wow. And I was going to go to that in the afternoon, and now I, ha- I have a cousin who's having like, quadruple bypass surgery in a week. And his birthday's next week, and then Thanksgiving. So his daughter's doing Thanksgiving and his birthday Saturday afternoon, so he doesn't miss it. Oh, so yeah. well, you got to be yeah. Right. So exactly. So in the afternoon, I'm I'm doing that, and then in the evening, I'm at his 16th birthday. Well, uh, prayers to him. Everything comes out well. Happy birthday Thank to you. the 16 uh, year old. And if you're not doing anything the following Saturday, come on over to Med Search, the Flying W, Rock for Food. A whole lot of great music, a whole lot of great energy, and we can talk about what the Saturday before was. <laughs> uh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and get, you know what? Get me that info over just so I can keep uh, I'll keep throwing that out there for you guys too. I absolutely will. Awesome. Well, this would not be complete without playing some Heaven's Edge. So you know, we got to play the the ultimate classic of uh, you know, skin the skin. Go for it. Cool. Check it out. Mark, thanks so much. <laughs> and uh, you know what? I got to get you cut an ID too. You know, this is Mark Evans sure. of Heaven's Edge. And you're listening to Totally Driven Radio. Go for it. This is Mark Evans from Heaven's Edge, Totally Driven Radio. Kick it out, people. There you go. All right, Mark. Talk to you. Good All luck right, Saturday. Thank you so much. You're right, welcome. Take care.